Hi, and welcome back to the program. In this video, we're looking at if statements. First thing to do again is create a new file and save it as if statements.py. And we've looked at if statements before when we have a variable should add, such as should continue, if it's true, if should continue is true, then we can print something out like hello. Now let's go back to the terminal and do Python 3.5 if statements. And that prints out hello as you would expect. Now, what do you think happens if I remove equal equal true? What do you think happens if I, if I run this again? Will we get something printed out? Will we get an error? Will we get nothing printed out? We still get hello, and that's because the equal equal true is not necessary. We can say if we should continue print hello, that kind of makes sense. Obviously, the variable name could be anything. In this case, this maybe doesn't make as much sense. But nevertheless, the equal equal true is implied if we don't include anything. So this means if should continue is true. So we don't need to include the is true, basically. <clears throat> so let's create a list of known people, known people. And that's going to be something like John, Anna, Mary, for example. And then we're going to say, ask the user for a value. So we're going to say person equal input, enter the person you know. So how would we now check that the person the user knows, the person they're going to type the name of, is in our known people? We've not covered this before, so I wouldn't expect you to necessarily know it, but some internet research goes a long way, for example. But nevertheless, I also wouldn't expect you to research everything or else this wouldn't really be a course. So what we can do is we say, if person in known people, print, you know this person. Okay, let's run that and see what happens. Well, as we would expect, we get a prompt saying enter the person you know, because that's what the input method has. So I'm going to enter John, and then it tells me that I know this person. So let's run it again, and now enter something else like Rolf, and we don't get anything, which is not ideal. We should probably get something saying you don't know this person. So we can do that. We can say if person not in known people print, you don't know this person. Python is quite nice that you can use proper English words such as in and not in. So let's run this again and put in Rolf. And now I'm going to press enter and you know what's going to come. And that is that you don't know this person. This is nice. We've got two if statements. If the person is in the known people, then we print out that we know this person. And if it's not, then we print that we do not know. But there is a couple of problems, really, with this. We've got some, some code that is duplicated, such as person and known people, in known people, really. So if we wanted to change like the name of this variable to people we know, not a very good change, but we would have to change it here and also here. So it's not 100% perfect. And also, our program is going to come in, run this if statement. Basically, it's going to check if person is in this list. And it's going to say, no, it isn't, or yes, it is, depending on the person. And then it's going to come down here and it's going to check it again. So if the person 
is in the known people, it's going to print, you know this person. And then it's going to check if the person isn't in known people. And that doesn't make sense, because it already knows that it is in the known people, so why would it check if it isn't? And you would be completely right, it's not really necessary. So instead, we can have a compound if statement. If the person is in the known people, print this out, and if not, print this other thing out. So what happens now is that if this is true, then we run this thing here, and if this is not true, then we run this other thing here. We don't have to check two things. Naturally, if this is true, then we will print out that you know this person, and then it will just kind of go to the end, and it will skip this bit entirely, which is a lot nicer. Okay, so just one more thing before the end of this video. Printing out, you know this person, is, is good, but we could also print out the name of the person. So, let's do that. And I'm going to say, you know, open and closing bracket. And you don't know, open and closing bracket. So, we're going to substitute open and closing bracket for the person's name. And the way we do that is we say, after the quotation mark, we're going to say, dot format person. And what this dot format method does is it's going to essentially format this string by replacing this pair of curly braces by the parameter or the argument to the format method. So this person, which is the user input, is then going to go in here. Let's run this and give it a go. Enter the person you know, Rolf, and it says now you don't know Rolf, which is great. So what we've looked at here is if statements and compound if statements, and also at the format method. The format method is really great because we can substitute things in strings very easily. We're going to be exploring more use cases of the format method in the next video, and we're going to have a wee programming exercise for you to complete in the next video as well. So I'll see you in the very next video.